Welcome to Sweethearts or Rivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. What's on my table today? Serenissima. Serenissima is a game that plays two to four players. Yep. They recommend ages 13 and up. Mm -hmm. And on the box, it could take you an hour to two hours to play. Yeah, we'll see about we'll that. We'll test it out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is going to be our overview, and there should be some links up here to our full playthrough as well as our review. Mm -hmm. and we're just going to switch the camera. We'll be right back. Dive right in. Alright. Okay, let's see what's in the box. Rules, of course. Rules. This nice game board. Yep. And bits, ships, and more bits. I'll be red. Um, I'm going to be green. There's green. And then we need the money and the dice. Dice. And the cards. Yep. I think that's everything. Oh, no. The game comes with um, some of these basilica and these fort icons, but I accidentally lost one of the basilica tokens down a furnace. So we have uh, some of these from uh, Meeple Source. So we'll just use these. Okay, sure. Cool. All right, so we have Serenissima set up for, almost set up, for a two-player game. Uh, this is the turn track up here, and if you're going to play a four-player game, you put the white marker on the yellow four-player space, and then each time it passes a yellow marker, you're going to do a, an in-game scoring, which is good, because that's how you get money. Uh, but if you're playing a three, two- or three-player game, uh, you start off in the red spot, and then every time you pass a red square, that's when you're going to do the scoring. And of course, the very end of the track is the end of the game, the final scoring. In the upper right corner, we have the Dodge A cards. Uh, there's several, several of them, and they get shuffled. At the end of a round, you flip one over, and it's going to show you how far along the turn track you go. And sometimes you go one space, sometimes you go two spaces, sometimes you don't go any spaces at all, and something like an event happens. And then there's a shuffle card, because there's only five dodgy cards. And there's a shuffle card, which means you shuffle them, so you don't always get all five cards come out in a row either. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing we do is we have our dice here. We have all of our sailors here, and Charlotte's got hers here. we got these two player aid cards to show you just how much stuff costs and what's important, which is kind of nice. We've got all of our galleys are out here. Uh, this is the turn order wheel, so this starts up here on the dodge A mark. And then we have our cubes. Very, very interesting um, player order mechanism in this game. So we'll explain that later. Then we've got our money. We've got all the different goods we can have. Um, again, we have, instead of our regular basilica and fort, uh, we have these wooden discs. And the last thing you have to do for a setup in a two-player game is you have to block off some of the ports. So we have to block off one of the ports that produces wood, okay. one of the ports that produces wine, one that produces marble, and one that produces stone. Well, I'm just wondering, since we can't really reach those, should we just put them up way up there? Like this here? Yep. Okay, Venezia's gone. That one's gone, that one's gone, and then one, four, there we go, that works. Yeah, I mean, that's not very strategic, but for ease of play today, yep. it works. And it means Constantinople is going to be kind of... A far out there. Yeah. yeah. But it's also a five port, which would make it good as well. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. All right, a uh, quick note is that the game actually comes with four player colors, and they're red, black, orange and blue not green <laughs> but uh, we actually set the game up with uh, some of the green pieces from meeplesource.com mm -hmm. uh, mostly because I just really like playing green and we've kind of expanded it on our own to play up to five players right. but the game officially plays two to four right okay and I would have got pink from meeplesource the octocubes they don't have them so yeah. I have to stick with them. someday red so the first thing we have to do is we have to determine player order, or first player. Okay. 
and then that person is going to choose which of the major ports they're going to start in. Let's roll the pirate dice. Pirate dice, sounds good. See how many skulls we get? Yeah. Okay. You got four. I just got four. I don't think I'm going first. Nope, I got <laughs> one. So that was horrible. <laughs> well, for you, not for me. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we get to pick our port first? Yep. Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to take Alexandria because it's right here and it's pretty neat. Makes sense. So I just go through these cards here until I find Alexandria. And you place that wine face down. Yes. Wine face down. Check. And it makes sense that I would take Valencia because, again, it's right here next to me. So I just go through again the cards here until I find Valencia. Valencia. And I put it wine face down. And then you get to take three of your troops and put them in that port because it belongs to you. Okay. The next thing you get to do is you get to choose one of the galleons and you get to choose its number. Three, of course. Three? Okay. So you put that in your port with three soldiers on it. And you take a red cube and you put it next to the number three. And you have to remind me because I always get mixed up which is the front of the boat and which is the back of the boat. I have no idea. Oh. I think the number's in the front, but I could be wrong. Oh, okay. Just because you can see over that where the back... I guess you're right. To me, it's too big to see over. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then I get to choose a boat, and I'm going to choose number one. And it starts with three of my soldier sailors. And then I put a green cube next to the number one. Now it's you. Hmm. I'll take six, please. Six. Okay. Yeah. It starts with three, and the cube goes into number six. I'm going to take number two. It's like so. I'll and you get one more. Lucky number seven. Number seven. There you go. Cube goes in number seven. And actually, I just remembered that in a two-player game, galleys 13, 14, and 15 are right out of the game. Out of the game. Yep. So, the reason that was important is because I would like to go last at the end of every round, so I'm going to take number 12. You always do that. Do I? I think so. I don't know. It seems like a good strategy to me. We'll see. So this goes to number 12. There we go. And now we have everything set up for a two-player game of Serenissima. So what's Serenissima about? Well, you are traders in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're boating around the Mediterranean and you're picking up resources from ports and you're bringing them to other ports in order to set up trade routes. So it's kind of pick up and delivery in a very unique way. But you're not delivering like one of these cubes. This doesn't represent one crate of wood. It represents um, kind of a sample of the wood from a particular port. And then you bring it to a port that doesn't get wood. And you say, look, look how awesome this wood is. And they're like, you're right. That's awesome. We're just going to start trading wood with that port. And it represents a trade route. Okay. So if I brought this over to Barcelona and gave it to them, they would no longer accept any incoming wood because they've already set up a trade route of wood. And by setting up these trade routes, you're going to make money. You're going to take over ports and make them your own. Uh, you're going to use uh, marble and gold to set up the basilicas to make extra bonus money. Uh, you're going to set up uh, forts out of um, the stone and the wood in order to defend your ports from being taken over. And of course, your sailors are also your soldiers. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be getting as many of those as possible in order to take over territory and spread your influence all across the Mediterranean. Right. The interesting thing is there is no point track anywhere on this board. Uh, and that is because um, what you're doing is you're spending 
and gaining money. And at the very end of the game, it's how much money you have. That's the winner. Mm -hmm. That is it. We must start with some money. We do. We start off with five ducats each. Ducats. There you go. Thanks. Yep. Um, so, uh, basically how Serenissima works is you start the turn by moving this marker along the turn order track. As soon as it comes to a spot that has a cube, that boat activates. So my boat number one would activate and I have a choice. I can either activate that boat to take some actions or I can basically say, you know what, that boat's just gonna stay si like silent for a while and then you can do an investment turn. Once you've chosen and you've taken that action, it's gonna move on to the next boat. So, hey, that's me again, I get to take another turn, hooray. And then it's gonna go over to number three, number six, seven, 12, and then once it hits the dodge H uh, spot again, that round is over and that's when we're gonna flip the dodge A card over to see what happens. If we're gonna move ahead on the time track or sometimes things can happen with wine, crazy stuff. Now on your turn when your boat activates, uh, if you want to do an investment, your boat can't do anything. But with an investment, you can buy more soldiers and they cost one ducat each so it's nice you can get more soldiers and sailors but you're spending your points to do that mm -hmm. um, you can only put soldiers in a boat that has space free in a port that you own and you can only put soldiers in a port that you own and these squares here with the numbers in them these represent warehouses the maximum number of soldiers that you can have garrison in each port equals the amount of warehouses. So if I put another two soldiers here, I can't get any more soldiers there. So buying soldiers, one ducat each. You can buy yourself another uh, ship or galleon, and it costs a number of ducats equal to the amount of boats you already have on the board. So for me to get a fourth ship is gonna cost me three ducats. And then you get, a, you get to put that boat out in a port that you already own. Uh, and you have to buy soldiers to put into that boat because if your boat ever has no soldiers, it sinks. Right. Yeah, apparently there's lots of holes in these boats and need soldiers to make sure that they stay plugged up. <laughs> <laughs> there's no one to man it though. Yeah. It goes yeah. in disrepair. Yeah, and it sinks. floats away and yeah. sinks. Um, and of course you can uh, buy a fort in a port that you own as long as that port has wood and um, ore or stone. In the warehouses. Yep. Um, and that's going to cost you two ducats and that's going to give you a defensive bonus for that port. Uh, if your port has gold and marble, you can spend two dollars and you can build a basilica. And a basilica, whenever you do a scoring, gives you five extra bucks. Right. So it's a little bit of investment and you get a lot of money for it. And what it produces counts. Yes. Right. Yep. So you can never bring gold to this port because Cecilia already produces gold. So if I bring marble over there, that port is ready to get a basilica. Right. Right. So that's an investment. <clears throat> um, but if you take the investment, your boat does not move. If you take a boat action and activate the boat, it does three things in a very specific order. The first thing it does is load. So if I activated ship number one, I could load um, goods from this port. So this, this, this port produces wood, so I could load a cube of wood in there. I could move soldiers from other boats or from the port into that boat. Whatever I wanna move into that boat, I have to do that first in the loading phase. Once the loading phase is done, the next phase is movement. So a very interesting mechanism uh, in Serenissima for movement. Uh, your boat can move a number of spaces equal to the number of sailors or soldiers you have in the boat. So the more soldiers you have in the boat, the farther and faster your boat can go, but the less room there is to have stuff in it. So you could take some soldiers out and just load it up with goods and you're gonna be moving incredibly slowly. Or you can load it up with people and move all over the board, but you're carrying very little. So it's an interesting balancing act. Mm -hmm. So that's the second phase is movement. You can move a number of spaces equal to your sailors. Um, if you move into a space 
with a rival player's boat in that space and they have more soldiers than you they can declare a blockade and you just stop so that's an interesting blocking technique once movement's over, you then have the choice of either doing a sail or doing battle. And that's the third and final phase. You can only do one or the other, you can't do both in that last phase. If you're doing battle, it means you're going to be attacking either another boat or you're going to be attacking a port. And uh, battle is very interesting. I'm going to be rolling, if I'm the attacker, a number of dice equal to the number of soldiers in my boat minus the number of spaces I just moved. Because if I move spaces, they're, they're tired from rowing and mm -hmm. they can't participate in the battle. At the exact same time, um, if there's a defender, they're gonna roll a number of dice equal to their soldiers. And when we roll, however many skulls come up, that's how many kills you got on the opposite team. And the dice are 50-50, aren't they? Uh, yeah. yeah. So. 50-50 of a skull or no skull. Yeah. Um, so they they happen simultaneously. So I don't attack and do damage and then Charlotte attacks back. It happens at the exact same time. Then we take our casualties and then the attacker decides, am I going to press the attack or am I going to not do that? Uh, so you can attack other boats. Uh, you can attack ports. If you attack a neutral port that has nobody in it, you just basically take one of your soldiers out and move it into the port and you just took it over. And you can move more than one if you want to leave a bigger garrison there. So that's battle. Pretty straightforward and easy. If you attack a port that has one of the forts on it, before the battle even happens, whoever owns that port is going to roll two dice, and they're going to inflict casualties before the battle even starts. Ooh. Yeah. So that Nothing was happens. not a very good roll. <laughs> But it's nice, before you even get a chance to attack, you can knock some people out from the attacker. So mm -hmm. forts are nice. Um, if you don't do battle, then you can do uh, sales. And sales allows you to um, sell some of your stuff from your boat into a port. If you own the port, you get nothing for it. If you don't own the port, um, you're gonna get a number equal to whichever one of these uh, warehouses you put that good into. And you always got to start with the lowest and work your way up. So on my turn, basically, I could take a wood cube from this port, put in my boat, move one space, and then I could drop it off here and make two bucks. And that's my turn. So a lot of choices, but turns move really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, an interesting thing with the whole blockade is if I'm in a port and I want to sell stuff and you have enough troops to blockade me, you can actually blockade me from selling as well as mm -hmm. moving. Okay. So that's interesting. Uh, then it moves on and it's the next player's turn. The only other interesting thing about the game is Tripoli, which is down here, is the only port on the entire board that has spice. The spice is interesting because there's one port that has it, which makes it very important to get that port. Plus, if you're selling spice to another port, it gives you an extra $2. So if you were to sell spice to one of your own ports, normally you make nothing, you're actually gonna make two bucks off of that. Uh, and the other interesting thing with the game is if you have wine, um, some of the dodge cards don't move the marker forward. Instead, there's like a celebration where every port that has wine makes extra money. So I guess getting wine to all your ports makes everyone happy. It's party time. Party time. Yeah. And that's Serenissima. Yeah. So what we're going to do is go into the next video, which is our gameplay. Yep. So thanks for watching. Thanks. And we'll see you there. Later.